I've loved working for uh, CBS. I've loved working for them, right? Because they've actually like acknowledged a lot of the hard work I put in there, which is something I never really saw a lot in a lot of the previous jobs I had, right? Even in the army, I didn't see it that much. But here they've actually taken me pretty, um, taken me very seriously. And now uh, within the past couple of months, and it, it's a shame that I'm doing it, um, they've been putting me in a lot of places that CBS had rented that are, um, they're moving out and they had to let a lot of people mm. go, right? And uh, that's disappointing, right? And I feel I feel like really, you know, fucked up for like being like, hey, you know, uh, the subway's right next to my job. You know, I got pizza across the street. I got everything right in front of me. I'm all alone here, right? Uh, this is the greatest job in the world while people are getting their stuff and they're moving out and after losing their jobs. So I feel like, uh, feel like a microbe sometimes when I think like that. Right. I got you. Yeah. And so, something like kind of the, to that effect too, as, as I'm sure even before COVID or for the reopening phases of what you're doing, you've probably had to deal with a lot of celebrities in that approach of doing your job. I was curious to know, like, have you ever had like small talks with people if they've had the time to uh, speak with you or like, was, was there any instances of really having like some personability with like other people of that status? Yes. Only two people. Right. Um, in, uh, when I worked in the mailroom, one of the areas I delivered to was, um, 60 minutes. Right. Oh, okay. And, um, the one of their one of their correspondents, uh, I believe, yeah, Bill Whitaker, right? He, I saw him almost like every week, at least I think it was like Wednesdays or Thursdays or whatever. And um, after about four months of doing that, I started to have little small talks with him here and there, right? He actually, uh, um, he saw a couple of times. He saw um, I had my uh, army jacket on the back of my. Uh, on the back of my cart, right? And he asked me a couple of times, he was like, how did you serve? And he said, thank you for your service. And I was in, I was in one of those positions. I was like, okay, you're famous. Got I'm it. not gonna make a scene. Over, I'm not gonna make a scene over here, there's cameras, right? But um, I think the nicest one I've met so far, and like this, this is the second one is Drew Barrymore, right? Oh, wow, that's she, cool. Yeah, because she has the show at, at our studio. Um, I've met her three times already. The first time I met her, we had like a small conversation outside and she's very, very personal. She doesn't even, she talks to you like she's not even famous at all, right? And she just came up to me, she's like, hi, I'm Drew, right? Nice to meet you and all that. And I was like, That's yeah. very interesting for somebody. Yeah. That's a, see like, I'm at, not to lose my train of thought, but it's interesting how she approached you in that way because you've been taught your entire life to assert yourself in situations and there could, there could be the chance of having that fallback based on the level of fame that you've attributed. So for her to still have that humbleness to her, to her and approach you, that does, that does spark a lot of like humility, even in people who've acclaimed to that stature. Yeah. And the fact that she actually, the second time I met her, she actually remembered me with the mask on. Right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she actually remembered me with the mask on. The third time she remembered me, uh, and it was the, when she remembered the third time. It was hilarious. Um, she was getting ready to start uh, shooting outside of the studio. She was gonna have a barbecue. It was like in October, right? And it was like one of those like days where it was like kind of warm, right? So I was already outside, and um, I'm smoking a cigarette. And she came by, and she's she's like, I know you from someplace like that, and I'm like. And I'm like, yes, you met me uh, two other times on the security guard here. So it's, oh, yes, your name is Adam, right? And I'm like, it's Alex, but you're close. You got the letter right. Um, oh, I think and, that's, that's, that's impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah, it, it really was. And then, you know, we talked for a little bit and I, I asked her because she had the, the guy showed up with the food and all that. And we're going to get ready to start uh, filming for them cooking the grill. I was like, oh, can I have some of that when you're done? It's just like if there's any left over, right? Um, and then I came back out later on to stop people from uh, walking into where the camera is. The funniest thing, um, I'm pushing people to the side and telling them, hey, you got to go through this side to get in. Brandon Marshall, right? 
Oh, wow. Caught on, yeah, Brandon Marshall, right? He shows up from going upstairs because my area was also for Dr. Oz and inside the NFL. He came outside and he walked out and he looked right back there. And he was like, oh, man, he's like, um, <clears throat> I'm like, you, know, you, you you know, it would actually be kind of funny if you walked in on, on set. That would actually uh, be funny. But no, don't try it. And he was like, oh, man, I'll get some. I'll, I'll wait around just to get some of that food. 